Hi, it's me again. Today is January 16th, 2019, and I believe it's a Wednesday today. Um, exactly one week since my birthday. My birthday was Wednesday of last week. It was good, I enjoyed it. Had a great day. Uh, well, first of all, I have a, I'll get that in a minute, I have a book haul for you. I uh, just recently got a new shipment of books. Um, which I'm looking forward to reading. Um, you may remember from one of my recent videos that I received for Christmas a copy of George Orwell's 1984, which I've finished reading and thoroughly enjoyed, surprisingly, because I've been meaning to read that for quite a while. And, um, yeah, I finished, I completed reading it, and I found it surprisingly quite um, enjoyable to read. Um, considering it's a dystopian novel, and I'm normally, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. So I decided, okay, what else has this guy written? So I went out and bought, I got this: George Orwell's *A Clergyman's Daughter*. Intimidated by her father, the rector of Knipe Hill, Dorothy performs her submissive roles of dutiful daughter and bullied housekeeper. Her thoughts are taken up with the costumes she's making for the church school play, by the hopelessness of preaching to the poor and by debts she cannot re repay in the 1930s Depression England. Suddenly, her routine shatters and Dorothy finds herself down and out in London. She is wearing silk stockings, has many money in her pocket, money in her pocket, but cannot remember her name. Orwell leads us through a landscape of unemployment, poverty and hunger, where Dorothy's faith is challenged by a social reality that changes her life. So I thought, that looks interesting. George Orwell, a clergyman's daughter. And then I also spotted this one. by George Orwell, down and out in Paris and London. George Orwell's vivid memoir, because that's what this is, an autobiographical memoir, of his time living among the desperately poor and destitute is a moving tour of the underworld of society. Written when Orwell is a, was a struggling writer in his 20s, it documents his first contract, contact sorry, with poverty sleeping in bug-infested hotels and doss houses of last resort, <clears throat> working as a dishwasher in Paris, surviving on scraps and cigarette butts, living alongside tramps, a stargazing pavement artist and a starving Russian ex-army captain, exposing a shocking previously hidden world to readers. Orwell gave a human race, human face, sorry, to the statistics of poverty for the first time. In doing so, he found his voice as a writer. So I thought that looks interesting. Mm. And then, of course, we have this one. George Orwell's The Road to Wigan Pier. Which I thought looked interesting. A searing account of George Orwell's experiences of working class life in the bleak, industrial heartlands of Yorkshire and Lancashire. The Road to Wigan Pier is a brilliant and bitter polemic that has lost none of its political impact over time. It, his graphically unforgettable descrip descriptions sorry, of social justice, slum housing, mining conditions, squalor, hunger and growing unemployment are written in unblinking honesty, fury and great humanity. The Road to Wigan Pier. And then we have this one. 
which I thought I would read to, to sort of see what it's like. George Orwell's The Lion and the Unicorn, Socialism and the English Genius. This is the most powerful portrait of England and why it must change ever written. Composed as bombs were falling over London at the height of the Blitz, it remains as radical, witty and crucial today as it was in 1941. George Orwell's The Lion and the Unicorn, Socialism and the English Genius. And finally, we have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Far in the future, the world controllers have created the ideal society. Through clever use of genetic engineering, brainwashing and recreational sex and drugs, all its members are happy cons consumers. Bernard Marx seems alone in harbouring an ill-defined longing to break free. A visit to one of the few remaining savage reservations, where, where the old imperfect life still continues, may be the cure for his distress. Huxley's ingenious fantasy of the future sheds a blazing light on the present and is considered to be his most enduring masterpiece. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. So, yes, and apparently I've got some more coming. So, I can't wait. Now, today is the 16th. And as of half an hour ago, it is now quarter past one in the afternoon. So half an hour ago, which was 12.45, my boyfriend left to go home to Melbourne. Um, he was here, since, he's been here since the 19th of December. So that's almost a month. But sadly, today he had to go home to Melbourne because um, he only budgeted to stay here and planned to stay here for just that, that time. Um, I knew that this was going to happen since before he even got here, so it was not unexpected. But it's just one of those things. You just gotta, you know, he stays here for a month and then he goes home. So you know, it's just, that's just what happens. And then he, he won't be here until April. We won't, he won't be up here until April 10th. So um, that's from today, that is 84 days. And counting. The countdown begins, 84 days. So, yeah. Um, and then he'll come up here again in August. He'll stay, um, the April trip will be here, it'll be April 10th to I think about May 6th or 7th I think so it's again almost a month and then we'll be up here August 23rd again for about roughly a month mid to late September so and as for Christmas of this year it's too early to tell it's still only in January so it's too early to tell what's happening for Christmas this year so we only just had just Christmas just gone. So it's like, no one wants to think about Christmas anymore. So it's like, okay. We've still got like a whole year to plan for this year's Christmas. So, yeah. That's what's happening. I've had my requisite cry. As you do in these sort of situations, you have to have a little cry, you know, honestly. I'm still probably, I'm still feeling a little bit emotional. But it's just, it's one of those things, you know, it happens, it happens all the time. You know, these sorts of things, especially if it's a long distance relationship, you know, you, you can't be together all the time. You have to, if the, the time that we have together is only a limited term. Which, you know, it's logistically speaking, that's the only way it can happen at the moment because we can't, no, neither one of us can afford to, to move in together at this point in time. Unfortunately, so it's just we have to remain in this situation for some period of time. 
so it's so it's just the way it is. I mean, logically, I understand that these sorts of things have to happen, but still, it's it's emotional because you know, I miss him when he's not here, and, 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 and so that when when he is here, I value that time all the more because you know it's such a long time between visits that you know I value immensely value the times that we are together and um no oh, I love him so much and I miss him and, and I know that he feels the same way so it's like you know I'm just happy to to um have him here when he's here and when he's not here at my, my, my just sort of Oh, I miss him so much already. It's only, it's only been half an hour. <laughs> Honestly, it's only been half an hour since he left, and already I miss him immensely. And um, I will Skype briefly tonight when he get after he gets home. So, and then um, so after that, it's back to, to normal. i um, skyping him every evening before bed. And um, little messages through the day of "I love you," "I miss you," "I need you," blah blah. Things like that, so yeah, but I, I, I can't wait to see him again in April. Oh, I love him anyway. Oh, they get a bit of oh, I've got a couple of chores to do and watch, finish watching this movie. So I thought I'd give you a, an update on my book haul and what's going on with my, my boyfriend and everything. I've had my cry and I'm all right now. So. Anyway, I shall, like always, encourage everyone to live with passion.